If there's one thing that can take your Home Assistant setup from good to absolutely incredible, then it has to be the add-ons. With so many to choose from, it's hard to know which ones genuinely make a difference and which ones just sit there taking up space. So today I'm sharing my five favorite, almost essential Home Assistant add-ons, the ones that I rely on and the ones that I think every smart home enthusiast should at least consider using. Hey everyone, welcome to Bite of Geek. My name's Simon and I'm here to help you build a smarter home with Home Assistant and Smart Home Technology. This is the third video in my Smart Home Christmas series and in this one I'm taking a look at add-ons, the unsung heroes of Home Assistant and as such I've picked out five of my favourite ones and what I would consider almost essential to install. So without further ado, let's jump straight in and take a look at what's in the list. So the first add-on I've got on my list is ESP Home and this really does open up a whole new world of possibilities within Home Assistant. Using something like one of these little ESP32 S3 microcontrollers, you can write code or install other people's code onto them and have them do amazing things. Installing ESP Home is very straightforward. Simply go to your settings and then add-ons and click on the add-on store button and search for ESP Home, then just install it. I've already got it installed and there isn't really much in the way of configuration to do. I have it set to automatically start. I have Watchdog turned on and I have it added to the sidebar so that it's easy to access. The About section of the add-on gives you a brief overview and even some example YAML that you could write to get the sensors on the ESP32 device into Home Assistant. It's great if you like to tinker with things and you fancy making your own sensors like a temperature or humidity sensor or even something like I have done. If I just go into my ESP home and as you can see I've got a present sensor set up here and I've already got some YAML written up to turn one of my devices into something I can use around the house. How to do all of this is beyond what this video is about so if this is something you'd be interested in seeing a video on then hit the like button down below. Next on my list is something that certainly if you want to expose more data about the machine that Home Assistant is running on or in fact install this elsewhere and pull that data into Home Assistant then this is a great add-on to install. What I'm talking about is glances and I use this as part of my monitoring dashboard that I'm building in Home Assistant. To install it you just search for glances in the add-on store and you can configure this to log information about your system. All the details are in the documentation tab of the add-on. When you've got that all set up and ready to go then the only kind of gotcha here is that you need to turn off protection mode so that it can access system level information. I've got this set up to automatically start and to appear in my sidebar and if we go into it then as you can see there's lots of information here about the hardware my home assistant is running on. We've got how much RAM and CPU is being used, what containers are currently running, network and disk information including usage and even temperature sensors from the CPU and motherboard. As I say, I have this installed on both Home Assistant and my NAS and this enables me to grab a lot of important information that I can put on my dashboard and see at a glance when something might be having a problem. Capturing the information provided by glances allows you to build powerful automations in Home Assistant. You could have an alert message sent to your mobile phone, for example, if the CPU has been running hot for too long or you're running out of disk space, enabling you to take action before you end up with a serious problem to deal with. If you're enjoying this video and finding it useful and you want more Home Assistant videos then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Now the next I've put on my list is a nice to have which when you've been using it for a while quickly becomes an essential to have and that is Studio Code Server. 
in the default installation of Home Assistant, there is the standard file editor. And I'd say it's pretty good for simple edits to files, kind of like as you go along. But if you're wanting to do any major editing of YAML files, then you'll almost certainly want to install Studio Code Server. This editor is the same as the standalone VS Code editor, which is a great general code editor from Microsoft. To install Studio Code Server, go to your add-ons and click on Add-on Store and search for Studio Code Server, and you should have something like this show up. As you can see in the information page, it's a world away from the built-in editor. So to get it installed, just click on Install. And again, I usually toggle on Automatically Start, watchdog and add to the sidebar and then click on the start button and there you have it if we just load up a file you can see we have a nice tree layout of our files and folders we've highlighted lines where the yaml is not correct we've got color coding for values and it all just makes it a lot easier to read especially when you're scrolling through very large files the fourth add-on on my list is Mosquito Broker, and I've recently done a video about it and showing you exactly how to install this into Home Assistant. Nice and straightforward to follow and showing you how to add a device to it as well. I'm not going to go through the install process here, but I'll put a link in the description of this video if you want to watch that to install it yourself. So why would you want the MQTT broker add-on installed? Well, if we go over to integrations and take a look at my installation here, you'll see I've got many devices from various brands that talk via MQTT. And if you want to use Zigbee to MQTT for your Zigbee devices, then you'll need to have it installed. In one of the upcoming videos in this Christmas series, I've got something else that uses MQTT, which will provide you with some amazing information that you won't have had access to before. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss that one. Finally, the fifth add-on on my list is something that is essential in a family household, or maybe you just have a strong focus on privacy and you don't want every website you visit knowing more about you. Well, this one is AdGuard Home. Now, you need to read the documentation carefully before you install this, and I'm not going to go into a full installation guide here, but getting this wrong has the potential to cause you some serious headaches. In your add-on store, search for AdGuard, and you should have something like this show up. Click on the install button, and then make sure you read the documentation before you start. Now you can configure AdGuard to be set at your router level so that everything in your house that is connected to the internet goes through it. Or you can, as I've done here, is just have it configured on a specific machine. There's lots of different options available. And obviously I would say setting it on your router would be the best option. As you can see though, as I visit various websites, you can see the stats changing on the dashboard. It's pretty powerful stuff. And certainly if you don't have the ability to do this level of blocking via the built-in software on your router, or you don't want to install and manage different installations of blocking software on each machine, then this is a great option to implement. So that's my five must-have Home Assistant add-ons. And I'm sure something there for everyone. Which one are you going to take a look at? Or are there some that you would like to add to that list? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It really does help support the channel and hit the notification bell as well so that you don't miss the next video that I've got lined up across the rest of December as part of my 12 days of Smart Home Christmas series. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.